When we come back, Canadian nudists fear for their way of life in the face of anti-pornography legislation. The bare facts and nothing but the facts next on CH's Naked Volleyball Tournament and Industrial Strength Sunscreen. The Canadian government is determined to fight child pornography, and that's one of the main objectives of Bill C-2. But some people fear that the bill could undermine their way of life. Nudists have taken their concerns, fully clothed, to Parliament Hill to tell legislators that naturists are not perverts, pornographers, or voyeurs. And they want to make sure that society in general respects their right to enjoy life without the constraints of clothing. Joining us today from Toronto is Stéphane Deschain, the president of the Federation of Canadian Naturists. And in studio is Paul Rappaport, the editor of Going Natural magazine. Paul, we understand the cover of a nudist magazine in Quebec raised some warning flags among MPs. Can you tell us what happened? Well, the magazine in Quebec last summer was refused distribution by the regular distributor there because on the cover was a child having fun, from my point of view. Mm. But the child was nude, hanging upside down, as kids that age will do, and uh, that raised some problems with some people, I suppose. But right. I don't feel that the magazine should have been refused distribution. But, but, you, but, but they're, you're showing, you know, showing a, uh, a youngster uh, um, to a lot of people being exploited uh, with private parts being shown. Uh, is that something you want on the newsstands uh, in this country? Oh, sure, once in a while. The, the child was, of course, not exploited at all from our point of view and there is some kind of myth going about I suppose that a naked child or a picture of one will somehow increase sex crimes against children. That's the assumption a lot of people make but there isn't any evidence for it. Hmm. Stefan, are the children of nudists, um, are they aware of the type of lifestyle and um, the possibilities of being exploited through uh, digital camera cell phones, uh, that type of thing. Do you think they're told at an early age, uh, in your experience, that their type of lifestyle is, is okay, should be acceptable, and there's nothing wrong with walking around with no clothes on in a society that is generally fully clothed? Well, of course they are, and my, my own children, I have children ages five and eight years old, are very aware of uh, naturism, and they're very aware that the rest of society has a lot of hang-ups when it comes to the human body. They don't think of exploitation or any of those complicated concepts. Uh, in fact, it's a very recent thing. We've very, become very, very afraid of exploitation. But as the, uh, one of the people uh, in Ottawa last week said, if there is no victim and no crime, where's the harm? Okay. Where do you draw the line, though? I mean, I've seen the images uh, that weren't digitized in this interview. And out of context, I think that they could be deemed child pornographic, child porn. How do you... How do you prevent that from happening? Well, see, this is exactly the problem. You're not sure what is child porn, and there's been a general chill where we see all images of children now as child, possible child pornography. Not all images of children, but you're saying all naked images of No, children. not just naked. I mean, there's even images of children where, they, where they're in a position that might be deemed out of context to be somehow sexual. We used to think of children as wholesome and an image of innocence. And now whenever we see children, particularly new children, we actually think of sex. We're actually sexualizing women's, uh, children's bodies, pardon me. It's, it's a terrible situation. But isn't that a result of crimes against children? And aren't we trying to, as adults, aren't we, um, aren't we required to protect these children? Don't we have a responsibility to protect our children from of being abused? Of course we have a responsibility. We should protect our children. It's a terrible, terrible crime. I have children. I would be horrified if that happened. The reality, though, is that children are not really exploited when they're nude. Children are exploited when they go to church, when they go to Boy Scouts, when they go to, ch to school, when they go to hockey. These are the places that the pedophiles have been found. Um, it's not the nude images of the children that are the problem. It's the pedophiles that are out there harming children. Exactly. And I guess the big question is, have you ever had any sex offenders or pedophiles within your own community? Well, I would say that there's been uh, one or two instances that I know of in the last uh, 10, 20 years. There's been far more instances in uh, other places where there's more children where see pedophiles are attracted to places where children congregate where just where they can be in a position of power in a nature's environment of course you're there with your family and there's lots of people around so there's very little opportunity and your your motives are pretty
pretty obvious because you're not wearing anything. Right. I want to ask Paul, um, how, were you, uh, how were you introduced to, uh, to naturism, I guess you would call it? How was I introduced yes. to naturism? Yeah. I read an article in a newspaper about it. It might well have been in Hamilton and decided to check out a nearby resort. And, and were you surprised? Were you shocked? Were you delighted at what you found at this uh, resort? I was not shocked or surprised. I knew exactly what would be going on, and uh, I just joined in the fun, went swimming, right. played volleyball, walked around. It was very freeing, very liberating. And is that it? It's for people who aren't naturists, what is the attraction? What is the appeal? For people who aren't who right. are naturists. Not. Well, the appeal to them might be the uh, inconvenience of clothing. For example, going swimming. It's always occurred to me to be, to, it's rather odd that people get dressed to get wet, for example. It's really, you know, how many people like to sit around in a cold, clammy bathing suit? <laughs> okay. Now, I, I think, you know, I, and I, I don't mean to be laughing, I'm certainly not laughing at the lifestyle or anything like that, but, but you must admit, if you mention to people what you do for a living, you must get some odd looks, not when you're when you're not wearing clothes, but just, just talking to them about this type of lifestyle. Do you find that people have trouble getting over the hurdle that you may talk politics, you may talk sports, you may talk about all these other things? Do they think that your entire lifestyle is based on being naked? Well, I wouldn't say my entire lifestyle is based on being naked personally. I think that's more of a weekend casual thing. And in fact, the nudity is, is almost irrelevant to us. It's very salient to you because it seems odd. But I've never really had a negative reaction. As Canadians, we're very tolerant and, and much more open-minded. Uh, certainly, I get the, uh, a lot of interest and curiosity and certainly lots of questions. And occasionally, I get people who uh, want to join me and uh, want to participate. Stefan, right. what do you want the government to do in, in terms of Bill C-2? What are you concerned about specifically and what can it do to protect your lifestyle? We're we want the government to clarify that mere child nudity is not pornography. Unfortunately, there's, uh, as with the case with the magazine in Quebec, people just aren't sure. You yourselves were asking the question. Mm -hmm. We don't know what is child pornography because it's left to the individual to determine that. And for some people, any nudity is sexuality and therefore any nudity is child pornography. That just isn't right and it isn't so. Right. Paul, I've got pictures of my kids, lots of them when they're young, naked. I'm not sure I would put them in a magazine. Do you have any qualms about that? No, we don't, of course, print pictures of people in a magazine that don't want to be there, but the children and adults, everybody of all ages who do want to be there, want to make a statement about this lifestyle, how innocuous it is and, and from one point of view, and how much fun and how much uh, liberation it provides them from another point of okay. view. Okay, fair enough. Stefan Deshane, Paul Rappaport, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for educating us, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.